nobody can excel in life constantly, correctly to the end of their life without operating under what of the hopeful nervous. Service to God is the advantage for the disadvantage. Mia left his brother Zita, and far left also his brother Gaius, and to my right, my Mia right is brother Tony, and also we have brother Sumpo, and uh, the team of the men's weekend is the Fruitful Men, so our discussion will be focusing on some topical discussion, interactive discussion, which we believe that it will benefit the men, and not just the men, the women as the family as a whole. So we have... I think we have like uh, 30 minutes, so definitely we'll welcome questions, comments from our elderly men and women, our brothers and sisters to see how this conversation can go deeper. First and foremost, we, brother Gaius, we all know the theme is fruitful men, and uh, at the vigil, we had a prayer session, one of the the brothers led a prayer about fruitfulness, talking about spiritual and uh, physical. So, Brother Gaius, I would like you to help us, you know, make us understand, like, uh, how should modern Christian men interpret and apply the concept of fruitfulness in their lives? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we bless God for today's service is happening right now. Unfortunately, I kind of lost my vibe before I'm misbehaving. However, uh, being fruitful entails a whole lot in life. And there is, uh, it's kind of go to a way that there is a gift, which is like a seed of faith, which is given to every man the same, equal measure. But what makes it different that someone is fruitful and the other is not. It's labor, spiritually. And there are different ways to labor spiritually. You pray, you fast, because a seed is given unto you. Thereafter, after it's given, it is our responsibility to determine our harvest. The, God says, I will bless the work of your hand. It means that there is something that he has given us. That when we put that thing into work, that's where the blessing comes. That's where the fruitfulness comes. From a single seed, a forest can be made. Amen. Amen. So how much you work on that field, on that seed, on that seed of faith that God has given you. Visioning that the power and the strength of what has to determine your harvest is not on you. I remember this testimony that a farmer would plant, like our brother, uh, that was on Friday, the night vigil. Yeah. He gave a scripture, he was saying something, but I was looking something more. He was talking about spiritual and physical uh, fruitfulness or prosperity. But in there, he was talking about a farmer planting, and when you plant your seed, assuming that's a seed of faith, you have planted, you have done your job. What takes place in the spirit God does that germination process. But then, to determine the ground where you will put that seed, you have to incline to the Lord to tell you that this is the right soil. This is not the right soil. And once you plant, you move away. The Lord takes care of business in the spirit. However, we shouldn't be like that man in Matthew 13. When he planted his seed, what did he do? He went to sleep. Amen. He went to sleep. And the Bible says, why men are asleep? The devil came and sowed tanks, that's grass, whatever you want to call it, amongst the weed. So in this situation, they were kind of fighting for survival. 
But a fruitful man will not sleep. Once he plants, he knows that the enemy is moving like a royal lion looking for who to devour. So he will go back spiritually and pray for that soil. Pray for that seed. Looking forward unto a bountiful harvest. Amen. We have a lot of uh, wonderful men here and they have a lot to say. So I will not take too deep into that. But we'll hear contributions from others as we'll receive contributions from uh, the audience. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. You know, one thing I sort of inferred from that. Last Sunday, pastors talk about positioning. You know, where you find yourself, how water that place is, the fertile land, determine the kind of fruit you get as well. In a way, just to expatiate on this discussion, I don't know if uh, Brother Zita has just a few words in like a minute or so just to, you know. Hallelujah. Yeah, um, talking about um, modern Christian men, how we interpret fruitfulness. Um, I look at it from this aspect that as Christian, when we begin to mark or paint our Christianity, when we begin to give it modern, ancient, that's when we begin to alter the standard of our fruitfulness. Hallelujah. The Bible made us to understand in the book of um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, talking about we not being conformed to this world, you know? So we are not looking at the modern system here, but we are presenting ourselves with an already made standard right from creation that God himself has already made about fruitfulness. So we run with that. Nothing changes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. So this conversation moves us to the next uh, topic, Brother Asumbo. You know, the argument of we know we have spiritual fruitfulness and physical fruitfulness. Please, can you make us understand the relationship between these two? Because the expectation is that spiritual should lead to physical. Can you make us understand the relationship between the spiritual and the physical fruitfulness? Sir? I would say the two are interrelated when we say physical and spiritual. Um, being in Christ and walking according to God's precept um, naturally should lead to fruitfulness. Uh, we've seen the example in the scriptures. Um, we talked about Abraham obeying God, doing God's will when God says, walk ye before me and be thou perfect. And how eventually the fruitfulness came. And I took my time and I was looking through the scriptures and I said, God gave him a child. Out of one, two came. And out of two, 17 came. I was like, okay, what kind of progression is this? Is it a geometric or is it arithmetic progression? One to two, two to 17. 12 and five. Because a man chose to honor God and to walk with him. And we could see the fruitfulness and stop them. That was deep, you know. And uh, having to have a biblical evidence to support this, we all know Abraham obeyed God, you know, just with a child. And we are product of Abraham, the countless of it. Well, in my own summary, I would say the spiritual supersede the physical. When you obey God spiritually, you're fruitful. Automatically, as Christians, we should be able to reap the work of our hands, and God will bless us regardless of how we want it. So that's where the physical aspect comes in. I don't know if Brother Tony has, in one or two minutes, something to say just to emphasize what Brother Sumbo talked about here. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think spiritual fruitfulness is different from physical fruitfulness. Uh, you can be fruitful spiritually. You are prayerful, you can fast, you can see visions, uh, you can go to heaven and even go fellowship with the Lord Jesus and you'll be poor on this earth. Uh, the Bible says, it said, heaven is his throne and the earth has he given to the children of men. So you have to understand the laws of the cos cosmos. You have to understand the laws that make men great on the surface of the earth. If you don't understand those laws, you're going to be fruitful spiritually, right? You are praying, you are fasting, you are reading the scriptures, right? But also having in mind that everything that God created, he deposited in that thing, the potential. It's called potential, right? Potential is different from something being activated, okay? So when God gives you a seed, he has put in that seed trees, 
right? God only creates things once. He creates systems. When he created man, he created a woman, that was it. After that, what did you see? You see a lot of people on the surface of the earth. So let me not digress too much. So being fruitful spiritually is you really have your, a relationship with your father. To be fruitful means to be relational. You have to have that relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That is said. And once you are fruitful with God, you inter when you are fruitful with your wife, what do you do? You are relational. You talk to your wife every day. You know, that means you are fruitful. You are being relational. But to be fruitful physically on earth, you have to understand what determines fruitfulness, like the law of honor, right? How to relate with people, right? If I ask right now, which book are we reading in terms of intellectual fruitfulness, in terms of, uh, let's say, family fruitfulness, in terms of career fruitfulness, in terms of financial fruitfulness? It starts from you having that light in your mind. It actually starts from your mind. If your mind is fruitful, your whole body will be fruitful. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. And in a way, just to still maintain that particular part of Brotony, we all know as a worker, as a child of God, you're supposed to do the work of God. Can you make us understand the, the role of evangelism and the discipleship play in that uh, world of fruitfulness in the modern day Christian men? Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it says, God is happy over a sinner that is one. So whenever we bring, we evangelize and bring people into uh, the, the faith, the heart of the Father is happy with us. If you want to get the attention of a great man and a rich man, you meet that person as the point of their need. What do that man need? And once you are able to meet that need, you get the attention of that great man. The same happens with our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is happy when souls are won into the kingdom. And if you are a soul winner, you are being fruitful, that gladdens the heart of the Father. Paul says, he said, follow me as I follow Christ, right? So... For you to be fruitful also, you need also to have a mentor in the Lord. Someone that you know they are following Christ while you are following them. If you don't have a mentor, uh, your path is not going to be well structured. they got to be a destination point. Someone that you can say, this is my mentor in terms of the things of God and the things of the Spirit. Well, thank you so much. I think Brother Gaius wants to add a little bit. Yes, uh, I just want to make a comment because when Brother Tony was talking, he mentioned something that's very pertinent to us, especially those that are coming from Africa. Very important. He mentioned family fruitfulness. We can look at that in depth or at this point, because I'm making a comment, I'll try to make it shallow. Some of us are here in this country by God's grace. We know where we are coming from and where we stand. We know that the responsibility is too much at one point. But then, this is something I would like to mention because we have turned to forget the people, our parents especially, that really worked hard for some of us to be here. God used them to bring us into the world and used them to bring us where we are. Then in the fruitful, God is blessing you in this land and sometimes we forget to send even a few things. I remember when Pastor came back from Nigeria, he mentioned that sometimes when you remember the people back home, even $20 can do a whole lot to what he saw. Then he was uh, on the uh, all night, that was two nights ago. He was talking about where we stand and the family responsibility. And I remember I once said to a brother, I said, where you are, the scripture fulfills. Your long life depends on the obedience of your parents not your spiritual parents, your physical parents. When they bless you, you will be blessed. If they curse you, you are cursed. It doesn't matter how much prayer you do, nights and fasting, because they need to enjoy you as the fruit of their labor. They were fruitful. That's why you are fruitful. 
You are in this land. Why should they live where they are living? Why should they keep eating the kind of food they are eating? Why God has blessed you? I said, at this point, even if your mother is a witch in the village, and he has eaten all the children in that village, she did not eat you. She loves you. She deserves to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Amen. 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 Let me just yes, so we can go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. I just want to quickly add this one in line with physical fruitfulness and spiritual fruitfulness. I, I look at both as a full package of every child of God. And then in line of discipleship and evangelism, I just want to say that all are a result of fruitfulness. As disciples, we are a result of other people's evangelism. And we, in turn, we should bear fruits via evangelism. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let me add a little to that. Okay. That you have yeah. a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, because when Rosita said at that time, and that's what I want to write on to say, we we'll be careful with this issue of modern and old. Um, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same today, yes, and forever, um, tomorrow. And if you also look at the book of John, talking about Father Jesus is the word out of the mouth of the Father was spoken, covered with flesh. So when the word of God comes through the mouth of Paul to Timothy to say, preach the word both in season and out of season. If we look at the concept of season from the scriptural point of view, he's talking about time. Season is not fall, winter, spring of 2024. Season is referring to time in life. Generation. So which means both modern Christian and the so-called maybe older assistant, the word of God still encourages us to abide by that word of doing the evangelism, which will ultimately bring about fruitfulness and life. Because the Bible says God will never forget our labor of love. When you honor the business of the Father and you prioritize it, God will definitely prioritize your own thing and you will see fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my take home from that, you know, that really sparked sort of like conversation around. We are all, we are fruit, right? And definitely we are also to bear fruit, regardless of the angles, physical or spiritual. And God will bless us for that. And the next one, this my sort of like spark some conversation. We all know lately we have the prosperity, the salvation perspective when it comes to gospel. Please, sir, uh, let me direct this question to Brother Gaius. Is financial success a valid measure of fruitfulness for Christian men today? In respect to the light of the gospel, I will answer this in two phases. It can be yes, and it can be no. Amen. Amen. Remember, in Deuteronomy, God says, I will bless the work of your hand spiritually we can pray we can fast but if you wake up in the morning and sit at home expecting money to drop from heaven that ain't gonna happen you will be broke until you be identified with poverty it can even be your middle name that's the amount of brokenness that will receive you but when you pray, people will be healed. People will be delivered. But the only ones that you will not deliver are the ones that are poor because you are poor. You cannot give what you don't have. You can cast out all the devils, but uh, the demon of poverty resides in you. He said, this one, I'm not living because I'm part of you. But that doesn't mean that you are not spiritually rich. Where is that seed? Where is that substance? How much have you nurtured it? How much have you prayed? And after praying, what are you doing after the prayer? Because when you pray, Jesus says, all things are possible. He said, uh, when you believe, you pray. And finally you do what? You receive. How do you receive? Receiving is also part of prayer. You receive by physically acting on what you have labored for. Then if you want to, that, that's a... Uh, spiritual part of it, it means that you can be spiritually rich and very financially broke. Hey. All around you. You cannot yeah. get a new house. You cannot get a new car. You are the ones with a, with a car that um, you are the best customer to the mechanics because your car is always breaking. 
and that's a terrible life to live as a spiritual person. But then if we apply the principle of the physical part of it, it means that once you are praying, you know that God hears you. Do you think God is happy to see his children broke? He is not a broke God. He is the God that has cattle on a thousand hills and he has given them unto us. But the most thing that is difficult for us is how to receive because we have cultured a life of laziness in the terms of fasting and prayer. We need to come out of that place. You pray in God in the secret. He answers you in the open. So he can show forth your financial riches, even physically, if you work on it. But then, on the other hand, just because you're financially prosper, uh, prosperous doesn't mean that you're uh, spiritually prosperous. It is very deceptive. It will lead many Christians that have uh, received this grace from God to hell. Because why? At one point, there are people here, oh, God forbid, if you're one of them, take this word and make a U-turn. In the days of, oh, you were really broke. You know that things were really difficult for you. Then God starts to bless you financially. How is your life reflecting the way you were before? Are you still committed in prayer? Are you still committed in fasting? Remember, sometimes you used to fast once a week, like every Wednesday. Or maybe in every month, you have like a three days dry fast, fresh fast, whatever fast you're doing, fruit fast. But you are doing some sort of fasting to make your commitment with God tied. Now that you have all this financial commitment, what has become of you? Excuses, I need to attend a meeting, I need to go to work, I need to do this, I need to do that. Take my kids to, God, uh, to school. Remember, God gave you all that. He can still take them. He is the only boss that can let you work when he's already fired you. So at one point, you will just be there and things are going down the drain. You don't know how. No, because you have disconnected from the source. So just because you are prospering financially, always take your standard of measurement in your spiritual life. That's where it stays. And that's where it stands. And that is what will survive you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that. So in, in essence, it tells us that both are kind of important. And we shouldn't get carried away with money and neglecting our spiritual growth. At the same time, you still have to do the finance part for us to be able to, to move forward. So... This conversation is leading us to the next uh, topical discussion, and I will direct this to Brother Tony. How should Christian balance the career, you know, ambitions and family responsibility of being fruitful? Picking a word from what Brother Gaio said, we have to work, make money as well. So how do we balance this? The career ambition, the responsibility of, the fam of being a family man, how does it relate to fruitful men? Thank you very much. Uh, I think there are certain buckets of things in lives that are very, very important as a human being. Uh, one of that is family. Uh, you can, I met the CEO of B Brown. I think that's your company. And I still remember that was in 2016. And he said that in order for him not to sacrifice his family for his career, he had to fly everywhere with his wife. So as you rise in your career, right, as you get to the C suit, as you get to the E suit, if you are not careful, you will lose what really, really matters in life. And that is your family. Uh, I'm a very ambitious person. Uh, for some of you that are close to me, I'm very driven. But at the, same at the same time, you have to balance that with your family life, right? It's really go it goes back to setting those priorities in your life. What is really uh -huh. most important to you as a human being? Career fruitfulness is very, very important. And at the same time, your family fruitfulness is more important than your career fruitfulness. You can have all the money, uh, you can become a director, a CEO, right? You are known all over the world, but your family is in shambles. Your family is nowhere to be found. That, the same thing ap applies to some pastors uh, traveling around the world, but at the same time, before you know it, their home is scattered, right? They are meeting the needs of other people, quote unquote, let's call ministry their career, right? Meeting the needs of other people now, but they neglected the one that is most important, which is your family. Jesus Christ even said it. 
He said, if you are not able to take care of your family, you are worse than what? Infidel. Uh, infidel. So, thanks. Well, thank you so much. I, I want to have Brother Sumbo to add one or two to that. Okay. Uh, if I'll use the example of John Gillick and Dr. Ben Cassidy to further uh, explain to what he said. To balance the fact that it's not just about career alone, you can even go into spiritual. John Gillick was so engrossed with the work of God, traveling around, he was so powerful. You know, healings were taking place. At some point, he said the bacteria that is causing infection or the virus that was causing infection should be placed on his hand. They did it, and afterwards, the check on that microscope was dead already. But even at that, while he was going about so carried away with the work of God, an incident happened back home, an infection that claimed the life of his three children and his wife, and they all died. And of course, when he came back from missionary work, he was broken. That, But thank God that he, that did not take his life away from Christ, and even a him came out of that. I also read it in book when Dr. Ben Carson at some point said he actually decided at some point when I become the CEO of uh, John Hoskins Hospital in uh, Maryland, that Saturdays and Sundays, he's going to cut himself off work. <laughs> at some point, it was like, you know, getting there, becoming, but he realized at some point that if he does not create time to have time for his children, what probably, what he struggled with when he was growing up might likely happen to his children. And he had to tell the management, okay, if I've given my Mondays to Friday for this work, I want to have time for my family. Because just like we've said other time to say, if you did not care for your home, you are worse than an infidel. And the scripture has already told us in the book of, I think, Proverbs 22 to say, train up a children. How do you train if you don't create time for them? Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. That was really deep. It's, it's very simple. We are working, making sure we have all the money growing. But what happens at home? I'm from Nigeria and I'm a Yoruba guy. They will tell you... Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yo, I, I, I believe. Interpret. Interpret. Yeah, yeah the, the point is that you nice. worked all your way up, you developed the home, your business, and you refuse to train a child. What happens afterward? If you don't give them the, the training they need to, to carry on after you, so it tells us that both are very, very important. We shouldn't shy away and leave our home and walking out there just to, to, be, to be prosperous. It's, it's good, but at the same time, we should balance it and pay attention to those two things. At this point, I would like to have comments, suggestions from our, the church, the audience, and I know our wisdom group, please, we are here to learn. And it, it doesn't matter the woman, the child, the, the children, I mean, so please. Thank you so much. I've seen Baba raising hand. Can you help us pass the mic to Baba? Doctor, I'll come on in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to mention a few things that I feel is important. When you're talking about fruitfulness, uh, in uh, Genesis 1.28, God says, Multiply, be fruitful and multiply. They are ignoring that particular uh, instruction from the Lord. The first thing to be physically fruitful is for you to multiply. You have to have as many children as, as you as as God has given you to have. Yeah, you don't ignore that. No, no matter what where you are in life, if you don't have, uh, even if you train everything, if you don't have children that, that will take over from you, other people will, I mean, all your efforts will go to somebody else. So don't ignore that. Secondly, spiritual fruitfulness. You must go out and make other people to become Christians. That's how you have uh, uh, Spiritually fruitful, you sow into the life of others, win them to Christ. Uh, somebody mentioned that all of you, all of us here, somebody witnessed to us, and and this is these were fruits of other people. So you must go up, go out and make uh, fruits of your own from other people by winning them to Christ. Now, uh, work and and the balancing work. Uh, your business. You must
must have priority. God is your first priority. Anything uh, above God is, you are wrong. You take God as your priority, number one, and then your family is your next priority. And in that family, your wife is your number one priority in that family. So then after your wife, then your children. After your children, then your job. So if you carry them wrong, you will, be, you will fail. If you don't put God first, you're going to fail. If you don't put your wife first, you put your children first, you're going to fail. So, so, and if you don't put your children first and you put your job first, you're going to fail. So then the, the, the last one that you're talking, you need to remind me, maybe. maybe the, the balance between the career ambition, the responsibility, and to be, be as a family man at the same time to be fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. The take home, I would like you. Oh, do you... oh. Yeah, praise you. the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I want us to do a serious, there is a balance that I, I want to check matters. Praise God. And when it comes to issue of spiritual fruitfulness, what is spiritual fruitfulness? You have to be able to identify the difference between activities and reconnections with God. Being fruitful, what Daddy just described is an example or redefinition of fruitfulness. When you are producing your kind for God, either physically, spiritually, you are fruitful. In. The fact that you are praying. Prayer is what? You are praying. The first thing that the prayer does is help you. The essence of fasting, the essence of most of the time, is not for God. It's actually for you, to be in order for you to receive. So when you now do that, so when you say somebody is fasting, they are praying, you are, what you are doing, you are energizing yourself. Then the seed is a prayer. At the place of prayer, you receive instruction. If all you pray, you don't receive instruction, then it's just a waste of time. Because prayer, effectual prayer is two-way. There is a sender and there is a receiver. You must receive as you send to God. It's the fruit of that prayer that you go and plant in your life, that you plant in your feet, that you plant in your studies, that you plant in your business. Is that is why God gives direction in the place of prayers. In the day you neglect the prayer praise and you start taking instructions, start doing your way, you will know that how easy it is for you to fail. Because by strength shall no man prevail. Anytime you neglect God in order to do it your way, then you will soon realize that what? All your effort put together, oh Lord, we see amount to nothing. But with God's help, a little direction will save you. A little instruction will help you. It will even shield you away from people you shouldn't have business with. So now, when you talk about people being fruitful, the fact that you are doing things, you are not taking steps, is a sign that you are not fruitful. If you are actually fruitful in place of prayer, you should receive instruction on what to do. The fact that you are not, that your prayer life is not leading you to action, is a sign that you are barren. If the only way your prayer life is fruitful is when that is a God give you what to do and you take a step, you plant that seed, you start watering, that is the place of what fruitfulness. So don't the father, what we are trying to do is very dangerous. That's why I quickly come in like that. You must have a balance. Spiritual don't don't nail a spiritual fruitfulness and and tag it and peg it to fasting and prayer and this one it doesn't no 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 don't do like that because once you do like that you are actually that's the place of strength we have that's the advantage we have as a christian our connection with god opportunity for instruction opportunity for direction opportunity for protection opportunity for living this is where we are ahead of others this is where we are god give us certain privilege that others do not have so in, in all our work with god make sure you are receiving instruction 
Make sure you are receiving direction. Then you now apply it, then you are fruitful. But don't just beg it and say, I've prayed. Uh, God will do. Any prayer that removes you out of the equation that will only put God is an irresponsible prayer. God is involved, you are involved. Both together we achieve greatness. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor, for that. In essence, our prayer is an activity to get results. So, definitely, to measure your fruitfulness, you must get results. You must hear from God. Thank you. And at this point, we can't have a man without a woman. We like uh, our women at least to add to this conversation. You know, we, we don't start up ourselves. Please, anyone from the women folk to add something or to comment or to, to hear from their own point of view as regards a fruitful man. Women. Maybe you. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe we can just point to someone. <laughs> well, I think someone recommended Pastor Mrs. wants to hide. So, yeah, letter from uh, Pastor Mrs. there. <laughs> yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, I just want to emphasize on the place of order, just like Daddy said, because oftentimes men think um, being busy, like with their career and with ministry, thank you, Brother Tony, that was amazing, for pointing out the ministers. You know, sometimes we think those things are, are more important than the family. So on behalf of all the women I'm standing in, to let our men understand that your family is your number one priority. Because on that altar, you can build. On that altar, you can intercede together. On that altar, you can, you can, you can, you can bet what you desire. And the place of a woman is very, very effective for all our men. To be fruitful, you need a woman. Without a woman, no man can be fruitful. So I just want us to understand that it takes, it takes a praying woman to understand your dream. And when that woman understands your dream, you can, you can bet that that woman will need, we go on ne ne neology to bet that dream for you. So please never despise the place of your wife. It will never despise the place of your children. Because in that, you see that the journey is easy and the dreams have been fulfilled easily. God bless us. Amen. Well, that, uh, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Ma. And uh, that brings us to the end of this session. In a nutshell, I will want us to go home and understand that you, don't, you are not fruitful. You can't be fruitful in, in isolation. It's not just one man show. It involves God. It involves you yourself, your family. And we are fruit. We are supposed to be fruitful as we are fruit of our parents or oh God, we should be able to see how we can develop folks as well. God bless us. Thank you so much for your time.